हे गाइस आज हम लाइक स्टार्ट करने वाले हैं आई एन सी एच ओ टू थाउजेंड टू प्रॉब्लम नंबर टू के सोल्यूशन एंड पर्टिकुलरली इन दिस सीरीज वी वुड बी टैकलिंग ऑल द डिटेल सोल्यूशन ऑफ द इंडियन नेशनल केमिस्ट्री ऑफ अपील एंड ऑल दिस सोल्यूशन आई एंड लाइक एवेलेबल इन एनी अदर साइड और इन सेवर वॉट एवर सो सो एनी वेज लेस प्रोसीड टू द सोल्यूशन एंड दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रॉब्लम इज ऑफ physical chemistry and it's from the chapter chemical dynamics okay so it was the problem number 2 from the paper and uh, it comprised of some 20 marks and we would be particularly seeing the little solution as well as the uh, individual break off of the uh, sub questions okay so this question goes by something like this that there is a reaction between nitric oxide and oxygen to produce nitrogen dioxide and the particular mechanism by which this particular reaction happens uh, has been given to us it proceeds in two steps in which the first step comprises of two no molecules which like dimerize and this is the first first step of the reaction further this n2o2 it reacts with oxygen to produce no2 which is the rds that is the slow step of the reaction and the question which they asked is to find the rate law of the particular equation and also the order of the rate law okay so the first thing that should strike in our mind is that we uh, for finding the rate law or finding the uh, like overall uh, you can say uh, rate expression of the equation of the reaction we have to take help of the rds and then eliminate the intermediate which is occurring in the reaction and it uh, as we all know that intermediate is a species which appears in between the reaction but not on the final rate law right so as you can see that no n2o2 it's occurring in the first step and it is being consumed in the second step so overall this n2o2 it's been cancelled out and it's not present in the our final expression right so let's proceed and as per the rds we have the rate K2 is equal to N2O2 times O2. This uh, uh, this is done by the second equation. But in the final reaction, we shouldn't have N2O2, of course, as it is the intermediate. So for eliminating the, the concentration of N2O2, we take help of the first equation, right? So by uh, chemical equilibrium, or we can say by the law of mass action, uh, we have this uh, N2O2 upon NO times NO. Uh, this is equal to K times K minus one. This will be in subscript. Okay, so substituting the value of N two O two in one, uh, we would get this particular equation K two times K one upon K minus one times N O K O square times O two. So this is our final rate equation. And as you can all see that uh, the uh, order of the reaction with respect to N O is two and with respect to oxygen it is one. Right. So we also got the answer of the second part. Is that the rate of the reaction with respect to NO that is two, and with respect to oxygen that is one. So the net order would be two plus one that is equal to three. Okay. So we are done with the first part. Okay. So let's proceed to the second part. And here the rate data of the reaction between NO and O2 at equal concentration are given below. Okay, so uh, in this particular uh, data, we are actually uh, like promoting an experiment, uh, which is proceeded in two steps, and uh, the uh, given data, uh, as you can all see, is given in a tabular form. Uh, what it is asking for from us is that to find the order of the reaction from the given data, as well as the rate, uh, like the units of the rate constant, as per the given data. Okay, so let's proceed to the solutions. Okay, so as uh, given, the concentration of NO and O2 initially taken is equal, as it is uh, like clearly mentioned. So let's assume that the concentration of NO is equals to O2 equals to some x. Let's suppose. Let the order of the reaction with respect to NO and O2 is equal to m and n. Okay. Although we have uh, like uh, we already find it out found out uh, in the first question, but uh, Here we have uh, we have to find it ag again from the experimental value. In the first step, we have we like uh, derive it from the theoretical aspect, but in the second part, it's uh, like telling us to derive it again with, with the help of the experimental values. 
So we cannot uh, directly say it is and two and this is one. We can't do that, right? We have to derive it experimentally from the given values. So as per set one, uh, writing the uh, rate equation again, so that would be N O times the order with respect to N O times O two times the order with respect to O two times K, and that is the rate constant of the particular equation. Uh, is equals to the rate of the equation as per the set one. So solving that, we would get this value after solving that, and similarly doing it for the set two, we would uh, reach to this thing. Now what we can do is we can divide the uh, first into second equations, which would result uh, us to this that uh, two to the power m plus n would be eight. So we can say it is approximately equal to eight. Which is equals to two to the power three, so m plus n equals to three, right? So the overall order as per the data would be three. Okay. Now coming on to the second part of this, we can now write it as rate is equal to k times concentration to the power three as the overall rate uh, order of the reaction is equals to three. So the units of the rate constant that is equals to k would be uh, the uh, units of the rate that is concentration second inverse. Times the concentration whole Q, which would result as this, this particular thing. So we are already done with the second part. Now we can proceed to the third part. And in the third part, it says that at 27 degrees Celsius, the rate of the forward reaction between NO and O2 to form the intermediate that is N2O2, uh, the activity complex is 12 times greater than the reverse reaction. Means that uh, it's saying that K one equals to minus uh, like plus twelve times K of minus one. Okay, and uh, what it is asking us is that uh, the free energy change that is like involved. Also, we have to comment on the spontaneity of the reaction. So let's proceed to the solutions. So here it is given that this NO it reacts with uh, O2 to produce NO2, and we are given the K as well as the KB. Okay, so we can do it like this also that we can uh, write it as NO plus NO would be producing the N2O2 or directly this equation also. Anything would suffice, right? We can either write this or else this. So uh, as per the equation, as per the given data, it says that the Forward rate constant with respect to the backward rate constant is twelve times greater, equals to K equilibrium C. So as it was given that the first step was equilibrium control, so we can write this by the law of mass X. And as we know that delta G is equal to minus R T times L M Q, the natural log of the uh, equilibrium constant. So as you can see that the, uh, see that the delta G comes out to be uh, a negative value. And so, as delta G is less than zero, so that means the reaction is spontaneous. Okay, so let's see the uh, fourth part of the question. It says that the temperature dependence of the uh, rate of the reaction is given by the Arrhenius equation. K is equal to A times E to the power uh, this E, where E represents the energy of the activation um, by R T. And we have to suggest a suitable graph to verify this dependence. So let's proceed to the solutions. Okay. So uh, coming on to the graph, right? So we can what we can do is that we can take the natural log on the LHS as well as the RHS, which we would uh, pro uh, proceed out to this. And uh, now we can easily plot the graph between this and this. Or what you can see that this particular thing, this would be plotted in the y-axis, and this a is a particular constant, say c1 times e times minus x upon again a particular constant. So this is the constant two upon x. Why uh, why we wrote uh, such as because in the y-axis we are plotting this k, and in the x-axis we are taking this t. So we can what we can do is we can replace this p by x and this k by y. Now uh, it would be coming out something like this: y is equal to e to the power minus one by x. So about the shape, of course, like the constants may vary, and uh, due to which there would be minor changes in the graph. But 
still it would be uh, looking something like the shape of this so as you can see when we would be plotting this at a very high temperatures it would be like closing to a particular value like it would be saturating at a particular point and this maximum point which uh, this particular rate could attain is that a as you can see that uh, when we this x it would be approaching infinity this y would be approaching a particular constant value and uh, as per the equation this constant value equals to a which is the rms factor which is a very large value so we can say uh, like uh, in a nutty concept that as x would be tending to x or we can say the temperature would be tending to infinity this particular value of k would be approaching the rms constant which is a very large value which means that when you increase the temperature to a very humongous amount the particular uh, rate would also increase henceforth so coming on to the fifth part in this particular part it has asked to choose the uh, correct option and mark the uh, x in the correct box okay so for a spontaneous reaction as per thermodynamics is concerned we have we need, we need to have the total delta s of the universe which would be greater than zero as we all know that whatever may be the process always the tendency of the universe is to increase its entropy and this total entropy that is the total entropy delta s of the universe comprises of two things the delta s of the system system means the part of the universe we are concerned or we are like studying at at the particular moment and surrounding is equal to the rest part of the universe except for the system so the total uh, entropy of the universe comprises of these things and the summation of this should be greater than zero as per thermodynamics so we will be marking this okay so as you can see from the solution also that the delta s of the system plus the delta s of the surrounding uh, the summation of this would uh, should like be greater than zero so coming on to the next part so here uh, in the sixth part it has uh, it is a big question not like big but it has some uh, minor parts also the question goes by something like this that the combustion of one mole of carbon monoxide releases this much amount of energy into the surrounding so first of all we have to write a balanced equation second we have to calculate the delta h the delta u uh, and delta s per mole of the combustion process at 27 degree celsius we are given the uh, masses we have to assume here and without any performing any calculations we have to uh, indicate whether the entropy change of the system for the combustion will be positive or negative okay so we have to also assume that the pressure and temperature are constant and we have to give a suitable reason for our answer so coming on to the solution but of course uh, we can write that uh, co it would uh, react with half mole of o2 to produce co2 and give this much amount of energy into the surroundings okay and this energy or the, this energy which the reaction is releasing is known as the heat of combustion and as we all know by this uh, releasing that delta u is equal to delta h minus nrt and uh, from this particular reaction we can see that uh, this n is actually negative here so we can see see that this is negative so negative negative it would be positive but still the magnitude here is very large due to which the entropy change would be negative okay and uh, for commenting the entropy let's see like that this that the total number of moles on the reactant sides is like 3 by 2 uh, one from the carbon monoxide and half from the oxygen molecule and uh, on the product side it is only one so as the uh, total number of moles of the reactant is greater than the total number of moles of the product so of course the entropy of the randomness of the system it tends to uh, have a minimum value or you can say it decreases so as delta s uh, it depends upon the randomness or you can say the number of moles therefore it uh, is less than zero for the particular reaction so you can say that this is not like very feasible reaction okay so here in this particular problem it says and this is the seventh part of the particular problem it says that 2.744 gram of co gas was actually transferred from a cubicle container of length l centimeter 
into a bigger cubical container which was initially empty of 12 cm at 27 degrees Celsius. Assuming that the gas behaves ideally, we have to calculate the delta S and also the work done during this process if it is carried out reversibly. So now we will be seeing the solution of the particular uh, question. So as it was stated initially that 2.74 gram of CO was transformed from a V1 volume which is like L cube as it is a tube and to a much larger volume 8 L cube as the given uh, edge length of the particular cube was 12 so we can find the volume likewise and as delta S is equal to NRT times LN V1 by V2 as the temperature is same so we can find the value of the delta S substituting the particular values uh, we can find that and also by the first law of thermodynamics we can say that delta Q is equal to delta U minus the work done so as delta U is equal to 0 as the temperature is same so we can say that the work done by the gas is equal to minus times the heat release and since it's taking place at a constant temperature we can say the heat release is the heat released at constant pressure which corresponds to minus T delta S as the reaction is taking place reversibly. So now we can also substitute it the particular values and we will procure the particular value. Okay. So um, that was it I guess. Okay, so we have one last question and in this question it is saying that water gas is like prepared by mixing CO with hydrogen and a reversible Carnot engine is employing water gas which operates between a water boiler and a sink containing liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius. So we have calculated the efficiency as well as we have to suggest a method to improve the efficiency of the engine. So let's see the solution of the particular equation. Okay, so let's first convert the temperature which are, which are given to us into the Kelvin uh, scale. So the source temperature would be 376 degree, uh, 373 degrees Celsius Kelvin as it is the temperature at which the water boils and the sink temperature would be 76 Kelvin as 196 degree Celsius was the temperature at which the liquid nitrogen was stored. So this is T1 and T2 and by the uh, like expression of efficiency of a Carnot engine which is 1 minus the temperature of the source upon the temperature of sink we can see that it comes out to be approximately 0.79 now we can see 0.8 okay so for exact purpose we have considered it to be 0.79 okay, so one method which you can do is to increase the efficiency is that we can increase the temperature at which the <coughs> water boils so what would happen is that the like for increasing the temperature, you can do one thing that we can increase the temperature above 1 UTM due to which the temperature of the boiling, like uh, the boiling temperature water would like cross 376, uh, 373, 373 Kelvin due to which the efficiency of the uh, engine would increase as it is like 1 minus T1 upon T2. So if we increase this T2, this particular value would decrease due to which when we subtract it from 1, the overall value would increase and hence the efficiency of the uh, engine would increase. So that was all for now and uh, this was the particular problem of uh, uh, 2002 and it was the problem number 2 and it comprised of 20 marks. It was quite an easy problem to be honest. We can do it just by grasping the G concepts and we need not do anything like out of the box. We have to just like mark the particular uh, concepts and uh, we follow the graph and all and we will also it was we can see uh, a fairly easy problem it was not something like very difficult for now so coming on to the end uh, thank you